Who likes books? I like books. Do you like books? Let's talk about books. The Mike of Summer Variety Hour. So we all have our favorite children's books, right? These stories give us positive role models who inspire us and give us something to strive for, right? Wrong! In this video, I'd like to present two case studies to illustrate the point that children's literature is in fact full of protagonists who are terrible role models for our children. Case number one, Curious George. Now I know what you're gonna say. Hang on, Micah! This beloved creation of Margaret and H.A. Ray is a monkey, not a person! You can't expect a monkey to be a role model. Well, I'll just say that the Rays treat Curious George as a person, so I'm going to, too, for the purposes of this video discussion. I'm also going to leave aside any discussion of the whole colonialist, problematic, they kidnapped him thing from Africa, white people. They ignore all of that. It's boring stuff. The important thing is that Curious George teaches children that they can do whatever they want and they will get away with it. Having fun at the train station, huh, George? Sure, go ahead and climb up to that big board and just mess around with all those numbers and letters. Oh boy, that is so fun! Ah, uh, but you've made people very, very confused. But that's okay, all you have to do is stop this stupid kid's toy from falling into the tracks and everybody thinks you're a hero. You might even get to ride in the front of the train. Good work! Accidentally dump a dump truck full of dirt into a pond? No problem! Your friendly park district workers will just turn it into an island for ducks. Why not? Let's go to the library! And ride the book cart! Isn't that fun, George? Oh no, you made a mess! But that's okay! You just taught kids the joy of reading! Somehow! The message of Curious George is that you can be willfully insubordinate, completely disregard any directions you're giving, and have no respect for other people's personal property as long as you're adorable! Is that the message we want to send to our children? No, because for the most part, they are adorable. But we can't let that go to their heads. <sighs> Case number two, Amelia Bedelia. Peggy Parrish's creation, Amelia Bedelia, is a woman whose grasp of the English language is so tenuous, she thinks that changing the towels requires a pair of scissors Drawing the drapes means sketching them on paper, and dressing the chicken requires some sexy, sexy lederhosen. But her employers, Mr. and Mrs. Rogers, don't care about any of that because she makes really good lemon meringue pie. And when Amelia Bedelia accidentally becomes a substitute teacher, she's got to deal with these kids, and I know what you're thinking, aha, I've seen this story before in Freedom Writers, Who Sir With Love, Mr. Holland's Opus, Dead Poets Society, Music of the Heart, Goodbye Mr. Chips, Le Choriste, Take the Lead, The Emperor's Club, even School of Rock, in which an unlikely teacher uses his or her unorthodox methods to win the heart of a group of unruly young kids to help them reach their full potential. And well, her methods are unorthodox. They involve yelling at food, forced exercise, planting light bulbs, vandalism, and some kind of brutal apple war. All because she doesn't understand that sometimes words sound the same, but have different meanings. But it's okay because she makes some delicious taffy apples, and the real teacher says, I'll let you teach any time. Now, preparing children for an economic reality in which, let's face it, a lot of us are going to be spending at least some of our lives doing chores for people who have more money than us. 
by telling them that it's okay to be really bad at those jobs as long as you're a kick-ass baker seems to me to be a bad idea. Likewise, the Amelia Bedelia books teach the rest of us to let it slide whenever someone is absolutely terrible at following any kind of directions. If Amelia Bedelia's friends and employers really wanted to support her, they would give her a loan to start her own bakery so she could do the thing she's actually good at, instead of always giving her these jobs for which she is brazenly unqualified. So there you have it, folks. These books carry the message to our children that gleeful insubordination and jaw-dropping incompetence are a-okay. So where do we go from here? Do we ban these books? Keep them out of the hands of our young, impressionable children? No. No, we do not. And you know why? Because the responsibility for teaching morals and values and what's important to our children does not rest with Peggy Parrish or with Margaret and H.A. Ray. That responsibility is ours. And the bottom line is, if your child is learning how to follow directions or how to respect other people's property from a picture book and not from you, then you're a bad parent. I'll see you next time on the Micah Summer Variety Hour. The Micah Summer Variety